what's up guys Sonic Gaming here and today we'll be looking at a Pixlr tutorial on how to make a YouTube logo. Pixlr is a great alternative to Adobe Photoshop because it is free and you can use most of the same tools. So let's start by going to Safari and typing in P Pixlr and click on this one and then click on these little arrows that'll bring you down here and instead of clicking express you're going to want to click on the editor and so it'll open up and you're going to want to click on create new image so what you're going to want to do is type in the name I'm going to put logo leave the presets but click transparent and then click OK so now what we're going to want to do is open up a new tab and type in grunge background then click on images and find one that you like I personally like this one right here but it is quite a big picture so I'm going to try and find one that is a little bit smaller maybe just a square not a rectangle okay so this one looks good right here what you're gonna wanna do is right click and click save image as and then rename it. I'm just going to put grunge background and then save it to where you want to. I'm going to put it in downloads and then click save. So now what we're going to want to do is go back to Pixlr and you can close out of that tab, click file, open image, and then choose your background and click open. So here's the background right here, and this is what is going to be our logo. So what we're going to want to do is click, go up here and click on edit, select all, then edit copy, and then on the actual logo itself, click edit paste. And as you can see, the logo is now on there. So you can just click this X and then just click no and then you have your background so the next thing you're gonna want to do is go to layer new layer and then if you look over here there should be a layer 2 or whatever layer you're on and then you're gonna want to click this then click the circle icon up here click on the fill shape so that there is no check mark in the box and then type in 25 into the border size then drag and make a circle that looks good it is quite wide though and so I'm gonna click edit undo and maybe make it 21 because that looks good so with 21 let's make a new one okay that's perfect so now we're gonna want to do is click on the selector tool and select it and then drag it around so it's centered so that looks good so now what we're gonna want to do is click on this bucket here and then go down to the color and choose your color I prefer to do white for the circle so just leave it at white and then left click on it to make it white so let's go back to the selector tool and reposition it okay that looks good and then click on this button right here so we're gonna start with the drop shadow as you can see if I click it off and then back on there is a cool looking shadow so let's play around with some of these buttons this will make it stronger 
or lighter. I'm going to set it to 75, I think. 76, that's good. And then distance will show how far away you want it from your circle. I think that's good at 13. And then the size is how big it is. So if you start at zero, it'll be a really thick and very noticeable shadow. But the bigger it gets, like if you're over here at 24, it's just barely noticeable, but it does make it have a 3D appearance. What I like to do is I like to move it so you can see it like that and then flip it around so it is around 25 degrees, then increase the size and then pick a color. So let's move it over here to start with and look at the blues. Let's try that and see what it looks like. Okay, so that doesn't actually look that good. So how about that? Okay, so that looks good. It's just enough so that you can see the shadow. So let's move it to 11. And then you can just see the shadow. So now we're gonna click on the inner shadow, make the size as small as possible, which is zero, and then rotate it around. Then let's move the distance to zero. That looks good, maybe. Maybe let's try one. Okay, so open it back up and choose the same color. So if I go back to drop and let's see, 240, 41, 25. So 240, 41, 25. And then click OK. And then increase the size so that you can still see the white, but it does have more of a 3D effect. Let's increase the distance a little bit, maybe. Okay, that looks good. So now what you're going to want to do is click OK, and then click the new tab button and type in DA fonts.com it should come up right here and this is where you're gonna pick a font so go and choose your font personally I like the ones under cartoon because they are definitely stand out more than some of the ones in something like fire and ice where they're clearly 2d but if you go over here to Cartoon, comic is a good one also. You see some of them like this where they have a 3D effect. Also ones like these are good where you can see that if you click on it, you can see all the letters and some are better than others. Like the S is really cool, the Z is cool. So pick out your font and then download it. Okay, so now we're gonna wanna do is go down here to Finder and click on Applications and then find the font book. Double click it. And then your font from Downloads. I will download the Fighting Spirit one and it's downloading. So I'm going to minimize Safari, then open it up right here, Fighting Spirit. I'm going to copy all of it and drag it into the font book. And it should all be there. So now we're going to X out of that. And now we are going to go back to Safari, open Pixlr. And now we are going to do File, 
save under logo I'm gonna make the quality full and then click OK and then save it to a tag or whatever place you want it and save it in downloads so click save and the reason we did that is because in order for the the font to take effect we are going to need to reload the page so we are just going to quit Safari minimize the font book and X out of finder then go back to Safari go back to Pixlr and then scroll down and launch the web app then open image from computer click logo or whatever you called it and then you should open it back up and then what we have right here is the text tool so if we click on it then we have to scroll down and find our font So here it is right here. So let's make a text. I'm going to do S or oops. I'm going to do S and then choose a color of white. Click OK. Then choose your font. Let's see which one do I like. This one's quite cool. So click OK. And then select it again and make the size 100 and as you can see this font actually does not work that well with it because it did get chopped off so I recommend the fonts that have not very wide letters so similar ones to okay this one right here the turbo which is a little bit skinnier and it will work so fighting turbo and then click the selector tool and move it to the center then what we're going to want to do is click on this and click on drop shadow and then go over here and if you remember your color mine was 240 41, 25, then click OK. And then make the size so that it's just barely visible, and click OK. And as you can see, we have created a very high definition logo that is quite good, especially because this is a free program. It's not like Photoshop but you can also have access to all the tools so you can do many different things like this one is the bloat tool so if I go back to background here I can bloat some places just click undo a couple times to get it back to normal okay so there we are so now what you're going to want to do, if you feel that your logo is now ready to be saved, you're going to want to go to File, Save, Logo, and put it to 100 if you have enough space on your computer, and then click OK. Then save it to the same place, then replace it. And minimize this. And now let's go to Finder, and click on the logo that you just made and there it is it is a really high quality photo and you can use it for a YouTube logo or you can put it on your website so that wraps it up for this tutorial if you've enjoyed this tutorial hit that like and subscribe button and comment below if you would like to see other tutorials like this and I'll see you in the next video.